morning guys this is dr qureshi again with you so this video was highly requested by my patients because i see a lot of one day post ops when dr lahi does the cataract surgery and i get to see his one day post ops and a lot of one week post ops also so um, some of the complications that come up or some of the things that can happen after any cataract surgery is corneal edema and corneal like i've always mentioned to you guys is like the entire part of the eye and i've mentioned it in a lot of my videos i'm going to show it to you again oh here's the cornea so this is the eye model and you can see the cornea is this transparent front part where megan is focusing this part so when this part has fluid accumulation on it which can happen it's a big surgery sometimes you know um, it can happen this fluid accumulates and it causes blurring of the vision fogging so a lot of patients, I'm being serious, a lot of patients say, oh, we are already using all these drops that you guys have prescribed to us. So after the cataract surgery, we prescribe a lot of patients um, on, a lot of patients are on ofloxacillin, which is an antibiotic, and then they have Predforte, which is a steroid, and then we also prescribe them Keterolac, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So those are the three basic drops. Sometimes we also prescribe them Maxitrol, which is an ointment, and um, that has different ingredients or different things in it. So patients ask us, like, I'm using all these drops, and then if I see corneal edema, I have to prescribe them something else also. So that drop that I prescribe to them is known as Mural 128. It's three times a day, and it's available in the market over the counter now. So they do all of those drops. So I just need to let the patients know because they ask those questions during the exams. Another thing that we do in the room, or before we do that procedure, I give them this. This is acetazolamide, it's a diuretic, it's a water pill, and this is an important thing that we have to give them, some pills, so it brings the pressure down because it's a water pill. So besides that, in the room, and these are a lot of drops, you're letting you guys know, we give them some glaucoma drops, such as Lumigan, Alphagam, which is Brimonidine, we can also put betamol, which is a timolol, which is a beta blocker. And then this one, Simbrenza, which is three times a day technically, but in the room, we put them on all these things. So look at this table here. I set it up for you guys. Diamox for high pressure. If it's more than 20, like maybe like 30, 34, I have to give them Diamox. Then I have to give them all these drops. And then this thing that you're noticing here is known as a spud. This is for corneal burping. What is corneal burping? I'm going to show it to you. Again, back to the model. I'm trying to see if I have a better eye model here. Oh, we can do it on this one here, actually. So this is the eye, and if you look here, this is the cornea. Under the lid, where the incision is given during the cataract surgery, in that area, I take this instrument and I kind of move it in that area between the two openings. So my boss taught, Dr. Lahi taught me, like remember I told you, like a fish mouth opening. So I go between those two openings or between those two membranes basically where the incision site was given and kind of release the pressure, okay? That is known as corneal burp. This happens under the lid in the white part of the eye. Remember that. Now, the second technique that I can do to bring the pressure down, and I'm talking about high pressures, like you know, if it's 34, 35, uh, 45 pressure, one day post op You see this syringe? I take this and I put this needle on it, and then I go in there and I do paracentesis. So paracentesis is done in the cornea, okay? I go in there with this and make a little, um, not an opening, but just go in there with the syringe to decrease the pressure. And you can see that the pressure is going down. And that is done in the cornea. So syringe, cornea, paracentesis, and then corneal burp will be in the incision area. Does that make sense? Incision area and that. And then my lovely assistants, such as Megan, who is making this video, she will go in there and she will quickly start checking the pressure. Intraocular pressure goes down. For instance, today we had two patients, right? One had 45 uh, pressure and they had no history of glaucoma whatsoever, no history of ocular hypertension. I did this. She brought in all these medicines. My assistants are very well trained. They bring in all the medicines, all the drops that they know I need. And then uh, I did this one, the corneal burp on that patient from 45. How much did it go down, Megan, the pressure the first time? Uh, 
like 33 33 the first time and then after 25 minutes we give them 25 minutes it went down to 20 something right mm -hmm. and then the second patient was like 38 or something mm -hmm. we did again the whole thing here what you see on this table and it went down to 22 mm -hmm. I remember and then we sent them home this is a good drop I usually send them home with not this one sorry this one Simbrenza and uh, this one is really, really good stuff also. This is not Simbrenza, sorry, this one. So Simbrenza is one drop three times a day. You can focus on it. Can you see the name on it? Yeah, Brimonidine and Dorsolamide. Okay, perfect. So that's about corneal edema, one day post-op is very common. Pressure goes down, patients feel more comfortable, vision starts improving, cornea clarity starts happening more so, and then Mural 128, the sodium chloride one that I prescribed, sucks out all the water from the cornea, the haze, the edema goes down, patients are happy, their vision starts improving. I see them back sometimes the next day or sometimes after a week, along with the, all the drops that I have given them. Do you have any questions about corneal edema? Good, awesome guys, have a good day.